Welcome everybody. On behalf of SUNY OER Services, I want to welcome you today to today's short webinar on Waymaker for Biology. My name is Mike Daly. I work with SUNY OER Services as a campus strategist, and I'm joined today by Dan Lee. Dan's with Lumen Learning. He's the Director of Teaching and Learning for Natural Sciences and Business. I'm going to begin by providing a brief overview of SUNY OER Services and the partnership that SUNY has with Lumen Learning. We'll then move into a live demonstration of Waymaker in biology, leaving time for your questions. I'm gonna be monitoring the chat as well throughout this webinar, so feel free to ask questions at any time during the presentation. Over the last two years, over 155,000 SUNY students and over 1,000 SUNY faculty have embraced the freedom and power of open educational resources. SUNY OER services is building on that momentum but we definitely can't scale and sustain OER across SUNY alone. We need partners. Lumen is a leader in OER and a natural partner for SUNY, given its experience, expertise, and leadership in open education. Today, we help campuses remove barriers, offer affordable and easy access to adaptable open course materials. Lumen Learning's vision is to enable unprecedented learning for all students and impact affordability, access, and student outcomes through the effective adoption of open educational resources at scale. This aligns with SUNY's mission to offer the people of New York educational services of the highest quality with the broadest possible access. Lumen Learning is a partner that listens to the needs of SUNY faculty, responds to the latest educational technological capabilities, incorporates OER into those technologies, and uses data to improve OER efforts. Lumen's OER courses and platforms are available to all SUNY faculty and students at no charge through this system level partnership. SUNY OER services and the SUNY Help Desk provide direct support for faculty and students using Lumen's platforms and OER courses. Together, we are intensely focused on ensuring data-driven, high-quality OER is available to SUNY students on day one, that the resources are offered at an affordable cost, in SUNY's case, for free, but the most important goal is to improve student success. In our Ready to Adopt OER course catalog, available at oer.suny.edu, you will find peer reviewed course materials and ancillary teaching resources for over 70 subjects, all of which are available at no cost to the SUNY students and faculty. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now and turn the controls over to Dan for a demonstra demonstration of Waymaker and biology courseware which combines OER with personalized learning tools and analytics to strengthen student learning and success. Great. Share. All right, first and foremost, I thank you, Mike, for, for the transition and, and thank you to everyone joining today and anyone who may be watching this in the future. Um, during the short time today, we're going to be covering three things during the live demonstration. We're going to be going over the instructor resources, the student resources, and most importantly, the analytics and tools that you'll have access to um, within Waymaker. But before we start and dive into those three main points, I want to make a, a clear distinction in that the tools that you'll find within Waymaker, especially the adaptive tools, are going to be fundamentally different from uh, many of the courseware tools that you may have seen in, in, in other online systems. And one of the main major differences is that and Waymaker, we're encouraging you to meta be think initiative and allow you the opportunity to build pivot interactions as you best fit, whether that's an online course or face-to-face, -face, however that course uh, is delivered. So on the screen, what you'll see is an example of a cartridge that's imported into your Blackboard instance. Um, everything that you'll see here that's grayed out, of course, will be the resources that's currently available to you. Um, the beauty of everything that's loaded into your Blackboard instance is that everything is modifiable, it's editable, and we purposely have loaded in content uh, way beyond what you may uh, just decide to use, because we do recognize that it is much easier to delete existing content than to add existing content. But if at any point, as we're looking through these instructor resources, 
you know, you're identifying that, oh, this will be a great opportunity to be able to add my individual assignments or my individual videos, you will certainly be able to have that same functionality, whether you import that directly into Blackboard and, or into an existing module. So keep in mind that everything that you see and everything that we're going over today is um, adjustable to um, your preferences. When we're looking at the instructor resources during this second module you'll see here, where it says faculty resources. We made it easy for you to be able to identify and quickly see um, the, where your PowerPoints are, the example of your course PDF. So if you do have students who need to have offline access to material, um, you can provide them with a PDF they can have access to um, offline instead of having to log in directly to the system. So that's easily available to you there. Um, your, your PowerPoints, your assignments, your quiz banks, um, a quick summary of interactive activities that you'll have access to can be found here on this main page. Uh, once again, with this highlighting the interactive activities, we made it easy for you to be able to quickly see in with, within each module what types of interactives are currently, uh, currently available to you. If you have questions alongside with the pacing, we've included within the module itself different modules that you can either include to combine if you are running short um, throughout the term or if you decide that you want to remove specific modules. We thought of many of the questions that you would traditionally have and try to make things as compact and easy as possible for you to be able to quick, quick modifications, whether you're removing the assignment altogether or if you're um, making them invisible for your students. So on this particular module where it says a course learning outcomes, I've opened this in advance, but one thing I want to point out is that all the content that you find within Waymaker is aligned specifically to the course learning outcomes. And when you click on this icon here, it's going to open a new tab that will provide you with within each module, within each of the questions, how the, the, the various formative and summative questions are tied to the multi-layered learning objectives that can be found here. And this will be important um, for us to reference once we start diving into the student perspective. So I'm going to go into an example module uh, and for, for this particular course, these are divided out currently on a weekly basis. And so you may be covering chemistry of life on week one and in, informed biological um, macromolecules on week two, et cetera. But as we said earlier, you can certainly modify these and combine these or edit these as needed. But we're going to dive into today, we're going to dive into trait inheritance and take a look at an example of a study plan that's found within Waymaker. And with all of your modules, you can expect to find an assignment that's already included as well as a quiz. So when you go into the study plan, students will have an example to be able to click on an icon which says why it matters. And why it matters is the opening vignette that is a um, opening page to identify the learning outcomes to put the material in context for them to be able to make sense of the different materials that they will be learning. Each student will have a chance to complete a, a, a diagnostic to be able to identify and quickly see what do they know and what do they not know when it comes down to the individual learning outcomes that are associated with this module. When they're starting the pretest, they'll be prompted to answer a, a variety of questions and based upon how they do, the system will respond accordingly. And so I'm going to go back. And show a simulation of what will happen after a student completes their um, analysis here. So when they've completed their initial analysis after they've completed why it matters and show what you know, these individual modules that are included here are a representation of the learning outcomes. And based on how they responded, the system will make an interpretation of what they should be focusing in on next. And when they're diving into the material, we're gonna go into this. 
The system will pinpoint areas where they should be focusing their time and attention. But all the content that you'll see within these courses will be enriched with um, feedback as well as simulations and questions that they'll be needing to respond to, to refer back to that critical engagement and the metacognitive thinking that we've been um, focusing in on for all of, our, all of our content within Waymaker. And so if you look at this, beyond simply reading the material, students will be prompted with a practice question. And instead of answering question and going, in, going into a system where they may not have a chance to see what it's influencing, they'll have a chance to put in a, uh, a free response and then click on show answer to be able to see and test themselves immediately to provide that feedback and see do they really know the material or not. As we're reading through the material again, they'll see another practice question that's clearly visible and illustrated for them here. And when they move on to the next page, many of our modules that you'll see will have simulations such as this, which will give them immediate feedback beyond reading through and providing free response answers. And so looking at this question here, we'll say incomplete dominance, that happened to be correct. The beauty of all of our simulations as well too is many of the, uh, uh, the materials you'll find will, will have an opportunity for students to be able to download a text only version of activity. So, if accessibility is a concern, please be aware that we are committed to making adjustments as well as ensuring that all students have a fair opportunity to be able to um, respond to the, the content and assessments that you provide in your courses. Um, here's an example of a YouTube video that's also embedded within this module um, that they'll have access to as well. And so going back to the individual learning outcomes, students will have much more than simply the content um, from what we've pulled from and what we made modifications to. It's a combination of videos, simulations, interactivities, all before ever diving into the assignments and the quizzes that you'll be expecting your students to complete. And so, this. After students have taken the time to complete an example of, going back to train narratives, After they've had a chance to complete the modules and complete the reading, they'll be prompted to put all the information that they've recently learned, to put it together and take a summative quiz in which you'll be able to see immediate feedback to, to analyze and interpret how they've been able to uh, absorb the content that they've expected them to learn. The last thing that I want to point out today is the analytics and the tools that you'll be able to um, pull from their responses when students are completing the individual study modules. And to set that up, it's as simple as clicking on faculty resources and clicking on Waymaker faculty tools. And if you have the opportunity to be able to um, set up messaging to your students before the term begins, we've listed here clearly tips for, for weeks zero to one, we wanna make sure that many of your students, if not all of them have a chance to be able to review the modules within your Blackboard course without having to uh, immediately refer to you or reach out to you to see what is Waymaker, how does it work? So we've included these modules uh, inside, but here's an example on for week zero, send a welcome message to all students. Letting students know of the assignments that will be, will be included for week one, week two. But when you are ready to finalize the uh, initial construction of your Waymaker course, we've included some automated tools, some nudge alerts that you can choose to, to, to include. It's as simple as five easy steps. And so going back, you're setting up your name, email address, and then you can choose and, and decide the types of recommendations that you'll be receiving from student responses, whether that's on a daily basis, whether a, an individual trigger is response um, is set, or, or their settings. And so when we go back to the modules we were looking at earlier, you have the ability to be able to set the mastery threshold of what will prompt a response, an automated response to them, and a response to you to be able to see uh, what, what, what actually should be indicated. And so you're setting the course dates, you're setting the mastery threshold. You also have a chance to be able to look at some pre-made messaging that's included 
to be able to, to be able to decide and see, are you, is your personality more of a coach or are you encouraging students to say, you just need to have one more shot, you can do better. Um, have you had a chance to go back and review the material before you take and complete your quiz? And so all your students will have a chance to be able to complete the quizzes after completing the study modules up to two times. And so these prompts will show up if the, your students do not meet a specific mastery threshold. For example, they don't complete 80%. Um, you have the choice of them to decide and select, are they going to receive information that's just the facts or are you more of a professor who's more like a coach? And so you can have the ability to be able to modify the type of automated messaging here on this next icon here. And here for study tips, we've included three sample messaging that you can include here. And it'll automate their first name, Here's an example of their preview and the type of messaging. And so if you'd like to make the modifications for yourself, you certainly can. And we welcome you to, to do that. Um, here's a, another example message for when a student does extremely well, when they're able to complete the modules. Here's message one. Well done on primary outcome name. Keep up the great work. You also have the ability to be able to set up some automatic um, customized recommended messages, whether it be your office hours or your supplemental help. And the one thing that I will say is that for all the students who have had a chance to be able to utilize Waymaker, whether you're a professor who is actively reaching out to your students or you're waiting for students to actively reach out to you, these automated messaging tools that are included allow you to be able to have more interactions with students to be able to make that opportunity to pivot, whether you have a student who's unwilling to speak up or someone who may not recognize that they do have two steps or they may just need one additional time to be able to review, to review the material before they take that finalized quiz. And so all of your interactions will be available here on this main page and you'll be able to take action directly with students when they show up on this list. And so if it's they're struggling with learning objective 2.2, it'll show up here and you'll have the opportunity to be able to use one of your pre-made um, templates or you can send a new message here on this main page. With that, um, I do want to let everyone know that the overview that we, we went over today, we we're just scratching the surface over the types of tools and activities that you'll be able to find within Waymaker. But if you do have additional questions in the future um, about how to modify your course, some best practices, some tips and tricks, please don't hesitate to reach out to Mike, and Laura, and myself. We wanted to make sure that we had a, we gave everybody the chance today to be able to get a, a brief preview of the tools and resources that you'll have access to when utilizing Waymaker. And with that, I'll pass it back to you, Mike. Thanks, Dan. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen as well. Dan, again, as he said, to reinforce that message, a rather brief demonstration of some of the powers of, of, of Waymaker, both in terms of student access and faculty interaction with student learning um, and reinforcements of both. At this point, we'll open up to any questions, um, obviously in the chat, we have a few minutes left, but I just wanna reinforce that OER at SUNY.edu is, is our email address that puts you in line with the SUNY Help Desk. And we also work very closely with Lumen Learning um, to make sure they're aware of issues that they need to pay attention to through that same email address, oer at suny.edu. We were looking at Waymaker's biology course today. You can preview the content of that course um, really outside of the Waymaker environment if you just want to look at pure content at oer.suny.edu along with the other 70 plus courses that I mentioned are in that catalog. And there's a really easy button, try this course, the uh, button at the top of every every page as you're previewing them, uh, put let you generate a form to try this content and really get your own customized version of that course. So in the Q&A, um, Jillian's saying she's new to OER. The concern with OER has been whether the context is peer reviewed and updated and is the context presented in the text demonstrated here peer reviewed and how often is it checked to make sure it includes recent discoveries? I think that's a great question, Jillian. Um, the material that we're including in, in our content uh, it is peer reviewed and it is reviewed by subject material experts. The beauty of having all of our content um, housed within open educational resources is that we, one, welcome feedback, and two, have the opportunity to be able to make updates. And so if there is material that you're um, reviewing and you're seeing 
um, we welcome your suggestions, but I will say that um, beyond having the material reviewed by subject material experts, we're also welcoming feedback from current and existing users to make sure that the quality content that we have is, uh, is, is not, not only very valuable, but also impactful to students so that you can reach those, learning out, do those individual learning objectives. And that's why we started off earlier today with emphasizing the learning objectives so that anytime we're updating content, we're ensuring that we're writing simultaneously formative and some of the questions to make sure that the content is reviewed and updated. And since we're a small group, if anyone wants to unmute themselves and ask a question, you're very welcome to do that. One other thing, uh, just, just to just speak on top of that, within each module, at the bottom of each page, when we're reviewing the content, you'll be able to click on the, the attributions to be able to see the modifications that we made internally, as well as the contributions from other subject material experts um, that, have reviewed the, that have reviewed the material. We'll leave this window open for a few more minutes. I know where this call was scheduled to three, so I'll leave it open to three o'clock. I want to thank everybody who attended today, and thanks for Dan Lee um, from Lumen for walking us through Waymakers Biology and for Laura for facilitating the, the Q&A. Um, again, oer at suny.edu if you have any follow-up questions for us. More than happy to provide an even more in-depth individualized tour of Waymaker at any time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. And thank you to those who are going to be watching the recording. <laughs>